Good afternoon and welcome to this lunchtime's session on flexible bus service data in BODS. I'm Tim Rivett. I've been working with the Department of Transport to uh, produce some uh, advice on how uh, flexible bus services can be provided to BODS. This is uh, the second of two sessions that I'm running. Uh, there's a couple of you that have come back for more. Uh, the last one was on the 2nd of June. Um, we are recording this and the recording will be uh, available along with the slides uh, in the next day or so and I'll send that out via the Eventbrite uh, service so you've got it for reference and can uh, share it with others that can't uh, join us this afternoon. Um, so um, what we're talking about today is the problem really that the Bus Open Data Service has identified and how to solve it, where at the moment the service supports fixed route and fixed timetables, uh, a standard regular service. Uh, it's easy to uh, provide data for both uh, timetables, live and fares. But increasingly, there are non-fixed networks that aren't properly supported by BODs, uh, and they're increasingly becoming part of the core network for transport authorities, uh, and that's an increasing problem because pretty much everybody uh, has some form of flexible service in their local area. Uh, some work that KPMG did on a discovery project back in November 21, um, with the work being done the summer before, so a couple of years ago now, um, identified that uh, all the authorities that they spoke to had got some form of flexible service, demand responsive transport, uh, whatever you want to call it in the area, and everybody wanted it publicised. So part of the, the problem with it not being available in BODS is that if you just take BODS data and stick it into a journey planner and go, I want to go from A to B. There are large parts of the country where the journey planner would go, eh, eh, there's nothing there and you can't make that journey, which is wrong. And given that these are increasing in number and they're being uh, encouraged by Department of Transport through rural funding, uh, bus service improvement plans and the like, that's an increasing problem. Uh, and as has been well documented, these can be quite costly to operate. And so getting a good take up is important to the sustainability and viability of these services. And so the lack of the data in the uh, open data sets is a challenge that we need to address. Uh, one of the um, Big challenges is actually identifying what a flexible bus service is. There are uh, as many names for these services as there are services. You know, flexible demand responsive, dialer ride, flexibus, Uber style, on demand. Um, they, there are so many different names, but fundamentally, uh, you can break them down, whatever they're called, into um a a set of categories that we can use to model which is what we're trying to do in this work so uh, they go from things that are totally flexible where there's no predetermined route or timetable and it will go from anywhere to anywhere uh, based on the people that have booked it there are some out there that are fixed routes, so it will go from A to B uh, via various points, but it will only run if people have booked it. And there are some out there which will operate on a partly fixed 
route fixed timetable service and then partly uh, with a flexible element uh, either it only runs when somebody's booked or uh, it will then just go anywhere based on uh, on the bookings that it's had so that this is one of the the challenges um now this is where we start to get into asks of you and your colleagues if you have got a particularly interesting service you think that operates in a way that isn't one of those sort of three types of categories or you think maybe a bit different then i'd like to know about them because i'd like to understand whether you can model them properly in the proposals or whether we need to make some tweaks and things like that to uh, to be able to make them work because what we're trying to do is get as many types of service as possible uh, into uh, data structures and things like that that can be shared through BODs and hopefully to customers and encourage them to uh, to use these services. Um, along with all the different variations in name and style and approach, there's a whole range of different ways that these need to be booked. Pretty much all of them need to be booked in some form in advance. There are some that you book while you're on the vehicle. We'll talk about those separately in a bit because I think they're an interesting case. Um, but where you need to register in advance, there's, you know, you phone up some, you email some, there's even one that we've come across that accepts postal bookings, um, but increasingly they're online, app-based, that sort of thing, and uh, increasingly closer to the journey time. You know, there's some out there that you can book within half an hour or so of, of a journey, uh, but there are some out there that you need to book the day before or even before that to uh, be able to guarantee uh, a journey. So we aim to sort out all of those different approaches to bookings and look aheads. So uh, the challenge that BODS has got is that there's lack of agreed approach about how to address flexible services at the moment. And so people have been trying to provide data into BODS in a number of different ways. Um, and um, they have varying levels of success, both supplying data and also the people consuming it and presenting it to the public. Probably the biggest, most popular way of providing it is by creating some form of sample timetable or a notional timetable that then says in notes somewhere that it's got to be booked in advance and this is how you book it or times are approximate something like that um, one of the uh, challenges with this is that because standard services in bods the advice is that you shouldn't use notes um, then a lot of the data consumers are just consuming the timetable going aha i know how to cope with this i know how to understand this and then presenting it as though that's actually what's going to happen and we've got reports of increasing numbers of people complaining that they've stood at a particular place expecting the bus to turn up and it's not turned up because they didn't know they had to book it so uh, how do we overcome that problem that's what we're trying to uh, achieve uh, because a lot of these services don't have you know, a notional timetable or a route or anything like that. But the only option for people at the moment um, and looking down the list of those of you that are here, inevitably some of you are uh, doing this to try and get some form of data into journey planners and downstream systems. And I can't fault you for doing that because that's what, you know, wants to happen. So um, what we have done is we've looked at the sort of services that we can support or think we can support uh, and um, 
fundamentally it comes down to what we're trying to do is make sure that everything that's registrable with a traffic commissioner as a flexible service uh, is supported we think that's been achieved but what we have in this consultation we want to test it and we want to test the technical aspects of it as well um, but because there's a wide range of different services that you can register we think that uh, most other types of flexible service uh, that don't need to be registered with the traffic commissioner are also supported so community transport and some of the you know section 22s and things like that um, they're supported so again if you've got ones that aren't registrable with the traffic commissioner that you think are particularly interesting or might be a challenge um then please do let me know about those so we can just do a quick check because whilst we recognize that there will be some out there that we probably can't model properly um we want to get as many as we can modeled uh, to get as much coverage as possible what we have tried to do though is make it as simple as possible to provide the data by minimizing the amount of information that's needed uh, we've looked at lots of publicity leaflets websites talked to uh, a number of you uh, to find out what information is available and distilled it down to the minimum uh, and we're fairly sure that everybody will be able to tell us uh, at least on on a bit of paper um, uh, the area that's covered which bus stops or which zones and the geography for that um, you know it's it's on a leaflet map if nothing else um, when it operates so what days of the week and what hours it operates within uh, and also how to book you know is it booking via an app or a telephone that sort of thing and and the the details of that things like phone number or urls and, and that sort of thing so fundamentally to uh, supply data you need these three bits of information to then be able to put them into uh, the technical format which we're proposing which is trans exchange which is the same structure that regular services are provided to bods in um while we're talking about uh bods um there is no plans to expect flexible services to have location data provided uh, in part because whilst it's very interesting to see a bus on a map uh, and that works for a regular fixed route service you know you stood there you can see that it's two bus stops away and it's coming towards you if you're stood on a street corner uh, having uh, booked a flexible service you might drive down the road next to yours and then go off for half an hour before it comes to you so knowing where the vehicle is in real time is thought to be less useful for these sorts of services and so therefore uh, there's no conversations about expecting location data to be provided people can if they want but uh, it's not something that's uh, particularly on the radar at the moment. Uh, fares, uh, we believe, is supported by what's been done already with the fares project and support supplying data into uh, BODs for that. Um, so um, let's have a look now at the types of service uh, that we think that we are supporting um, at a high level so uh, at the most simplistic level uh, there is the the flexible zone where you can get the the service from any point and you can go to any point and there's no predetermined route that it's going to take so the any location to any location examples you then have some that uh, 
uh, will pick up at predefined points and go to a zone and drop people off uh, and vice versa. So typically these are services that will pick up from a village or a group of villages and drop people off at uh, a town's supermarket or rail station and then go back the other way at some point when people want to uh, to reverse the journey. So uh, predefined locations could be bus stops, could be uh, other locations um, and zones are supported. Um, the any to any um, where you've got a mix of predefined locations and uh, zones and it will just operate flexibly within those. Um, you can also have those fixed locations within zones. Um, and so, you know, you might have uh, the the village square in the middle of a, of a wider zone that's a predetermined location that the journey will always start from and then go to wherever it's going to go to. So uh, the totally flexible any to any uh, type arrangement. And then we've got those that have part fixed route, fixed timetables, and then go off and do things at the beginning or end of a journey, or there are some that do it in the middle. Um, there used to be more of those around than there are at the moment, but there's a few more of these sort of coming into being um, at the moment. Um, and then um, the last um type and we've got some proposals for these which are slightly different for others which we'll look at um where uh, it will go into a village uh, if you're on the bus and say i want to go into the village um but otherwise it will just go along the main road and bypass that location so you've got to be on the vehicle to book it you know you or you make the arrangement with the driver to pick you up on the return journey if that's the case um and sometimes that's in the middle of a journey sometimes it's that the at the beginning or end of a of a journey so we'll look at that and the proposals for that so um if we look at technically how you provide this uh, apologies in advance it does it doesn't get too technical uh, into Trans Exchange, but we're going to look at the constructs within Trans Exchange that we're using. So um, within Trans Exchange at the moment, um, if you're supplying standard bus service data, you don't need to worry about service classification. But if you've got a flexible service, you need to say that it's a flexible service. Um, if you've got a service that's got part fixed route and fixed timetable and so being coded as a standard service and then part flexible you need to uh, say it's flexible um, because that then opens up access to uh, the other bits for flexible services uh, and it's mandated in the schema um, so once you've done that there's a structure um, around flexible services um, and in the same way that if you've got a regular uh, bus service, you need to have a at least one journey pattern. So, you know, where's it going and how long does it take to get between stops? You've got to have at least one flexible journey pattern. You can have more than one, though. So, you know, if you've got multiple zones and operation, days of operation and things like that, you can describe them. Um, by having uh, multiple flexible journey patterns. Um, within, when you're describing the journey pattern, you know, what happens to, to the vehicle, um, then um, you describe that using uh, the uh, structure around flexible stop usage. So how you know which which areas which stops are going to be used um a key point here is that there are some software systems out there that support a now depreciated um setup 
that uses flexible zone and fixed stop points now they were valid in transit exchange 2.1 but in 2.4 they've been depreciated and a new structure uh, stop points in sequence has been introduced now there has been a discussion about whether we allow the older structures to be used but if we look to the future and what might happen then it's been uh, agreed that we should be going forward with the future structures so if we ever moved to trans exchange 2.5 or netex which people are having to support for for fares and things like that already then uh, we should be using the the data structures that are going to be valid going into future so might be a little bit of effort for some people to um, get these changes into their um, IT systems, um, but that sets everything up for the future um, and therefore the right thing to do. So um, within the stop points sequence, um, you can uh, identify um whether it's a uh, a flexible stop so it might be a zone it might be one that doesn't have a pole in the ground that sort of thing or whether it's fixed stop and you can mix and match them um these are um structures that are already supported in naptan so we're building on things that um at least a reasonable number of you can support but we do suspect that not all NAPTAN management systems that are in use can support these at the moment. So uh, we're working with uh, the the NAPTAN team and there's conversations going on. And, and I think the three of them are on the call uh, with us today. Um, and this is one of the, the one of the challenges that we've got to overcome with this is making sure that um, uh, the zones and the stops are properly supported. So um, this is only the this is the first of two bits that look at the detailed trans exchange. Um, you can, um, in this case, just say this this flexible service just operates within um, this zone, um, and that's it. Um, very simple. Um, very easy and supportable. Um, if you want to get more complicated because your service, um, for example, goes to a number of predefined fixed points in a particular order, you know, you in this case, um, it will pick people up at the shop, then go on to the church and then go into a zone um and do whatever it's going to do in the zone and then the journey always ends uh, at uh, a village uh, further on then you can structure that and you can say by using sequence numbers the order in which it's going to go so you know it's going to visit two stops then it's going to go into the zone and it's going to end at another stop if it just wandered between all of those then you don't need to specify the sequence number um, and uh, Journey Planner will understand that um, it just uses those in any order. Um, so once you've defined where the service operates, um, you then define how you book it. And so um, you have to have a description um, that says, um, you know, um, opening hours of the service, booking service, for example, and things like that. This is mandated. You have to provide this. Um, now, this is one of the strings for those of you that might um, need to deal with data for Wales. This is one of those that supports uh different languages and so you could have a description in English and a description in Welsh as separate uh, fields. Um, once you've got a description you then need to say um, how you book it uh, and you need to have at least one of these in BODS. The schema for those of you that 
are more technical doesn't mandate any of these but bods is going to um when you supply data to it on the basis that um you've got to have some way of booking this so you know either a telephone number or an email a physical address or a uh, web address um now if you book if you are an app based service uh, and you know, you'll have an android app and an iphone app uh, unfortunately, Trans Exchange only supports one URL, so you'll need to point people to a web page, which for everybody that we've talked to has got that says download your apps from these app stores. Um, and so we don't think that's a problem, but you'll need to um, point people uh, at a web page rather than direct at app stores. Um, and then um you uh can say whether all bookings are take are taken or if not um then that you might have a service where it's got free requirements you know so if you've got a community transport service for example that will only take people that uh, have met certain criteria um you don't have to, you know if you say all bookings taken is false then there's an expectation that there's some uh, predefined criteria and things like that. Um, once you've um, said how you book, then uh, you define the um, times of operation. So this is when the service will operate, which days um, and what times. So you might have a service that operates Monday to Friday, um, or Saturdays, you might have different times on a Saturday, so you can specify the times um, separately for each um, uh, day, um, and you can have multiple times. So there's quite a lot of services out there that will operate, say, 9.30 till 12, and then 2 till 3.30, those sort of non-peak times. Um, you can specify that using this structure. Um, we've had a message. Um, so can I just confirm on Welsh language, understand that you need to duplicate the file as each field can be in English or Welsh is not a translation version. So um, for the fields that support language like description, um, you would have the one trans exchange file and you would specify um, among the attributes of description what the language was. Uh, the defaults uh, English, but um you can add more than one um so um we'll come on to um andrews um in a question in a bit um so um that gets us to the point of um getting um the planned data into trans exchange for journey planners to use and that sort of thing um for on demand stops so these are the ones where um you know there's one or two stops um along a route that um are um uh sort of only stopped at when somebody requests there's a number of these where actually you can only request that uh, when you're on the bus and things like that, requiring the use of um, all of the structures we've just discussed um, is uh, is a bit onerous. Um, and so we've got a proposal um, to uh, to make that simpler at the moment. Um, this is another case where people are um, using note fields to um identify uh, that it sets down by request to driver only for example um and uh, a lot of the time uh, because it's a note journey planners can't interpret that um you know they're just including that stop along the along the route and you know if you've not booked it to you know be picked up with the driver on the previous journey then um 
it's never going to come and so you're going to be stood by the side of the road waiting for a bus that's that never comes um and so um as we said before notes in in the in the bods trans exchange um are um optional and not recommended um and that's where the problem lies so um there are a couple of problems we've talked about the notes um some of the data consumers that are using this data don't on a set down only flags um so you know all stops are identified as ones that you can um be picked up from um and because there's not enough data within the files at the moment um the translation to a format called gtfs that a lot of journey planners google apple um city mapper all these sort of organizations use there's not enough data for them to identify that um this is a uh, a range on um range with the driver um then um they're not reflecting it properly because the date they're just not getting the data that they need to be able to replicate it properly and so the proposal um is that um because the full suite of things is overkill for single stops and a couple of stops um there's an update to the trans exchange schema um a single file that in something called the activity that identifies uh, whether a stop is pick up or set down only or or both which most are um that we add in something that's pick up driver request and set down driver request that enables the gtfs format consumers to know enough to be able to reflect in their systems uh, what's happening um as well as those that are consuming trans exchange um and it fits with what happens in uh future um standards like gtfs um now it does mean because there's a change there is going to need to be some education for data consumers to get this data right but those conversations are starting to happen um already so that's the proposal for those odd stops along a route that just call when you request from a driver um there are going to be some challenges in implementing what we've been talking about um we may have got this badly wrong um that's why we're having the consultation if we have then there's going to be significant rework fair enough hands up we've got it wrong we'll uh, have another go um flexible services the data format isn't as well supported as it could be so um, there will be some need for updates to it systems and things like that in some cases um, we've touched on um, the bus stop types in NATAN. Um, some of you already create flexible zones and stops so we see those in NATAN, so we know some people can do it but we're not seeing that for all the areas of the country that we know we've got flexible services and things like that so there's going to need to be some education um and and work done with authorities because um if the the zones and and flexible stops aren't set up um in advance an operator can't then say i'm going to use this in their files um and so uh, so there's some education there and likewise there's there's some uh, education and encouragement of system suppliers uh, and uh, data consumers to make sure that they understand how to use the data um we've been having those conversations over the last couple of months as we've been going through the process to get to this point but we'll do some more once we've uh, once we've firmed up this following the consultation um in terms of um where we go from here and next steps um 
we've got a draft technical profile um, that adds on to the current BODS Trans Exchange profile document, the, the details for flexible bus services. It is an addition to the profile, um, at least for the moment. Um, you will need to refer back to um, lots of the um, uh, lots of the main profile if you're doing flexible bus services, because an awful lot of the structures um, which we've not talked about today are contained in there that are reused in in flexible bus services. But for now, it's uh, uh, a separate document. At some point, when the next release of the the profile document is produced. 1.2 or 2, whatever it's going to be, then we'll uh, combine the two so there's a single document that covers both standard and flexible um, services. Um, in terms of time scales, um, we've released the draft. We're going through these calls and consultation process, talking to lots of people um, again about this. Um, we're asking for feedback on the proposals by the 18th of June. That then enables us to update it now uh, based on the feedback. Now, if what we've done is largely correct and there's some, you know, inevitable little tweaks and, and changes, then um, we'll get the updated one out before the end of this month. Um, and then go through a final feedback process. Uh, if we've got it badly wrong, then we'll have to have a bit more of a rethink um, and it will take a little bit longer. But, um, you know, even then we hope that we'll be able to uh, to deal with it at least over the summer rather than letting it um, go into the to the autumn and winter. Um, whilst we've been um, doing the development and consultation, um the bods team have been uh, busy working on the uh, interface designs that bus operators and consumers will use for flexible services some of you have been involved in some of these conversations and work um and the more behind the scenes team have been looking at some sample data uh, making sure that they've got things uh, in place to be able to accept flexible service data and do some very basic validation. And so um, once we've got the profile and the technical details agreed, um, BODS will be ready uh, fairly quickly because we've been doing this parallel uh, effort. Um, and if you've got feedback, please, send your comments and thoughts if you've got you know, some interesting services that you think aren't covered by any of the categories that we've talked about then then do let me know please use txcpti at timrivet.co.uk um, so that I don't lose it along with all the other emails that I'm getting um, and yeah if you can do that by the 18th that would be great um so uh, i'm going to move on to any questions um so we've got some in the chat already so from andrew is the booking in real time if you plan a journey and find bus is not available and the solution is no use right okay so right at the start in the um, discovery work that was done a couple of years ago, we identified um, that um, ultimately, the ultimate solution would be somebody plans a journey from A to B um, and it's all booked as part of the journey planning process um, and paid for, et cetera. That's uh, very much in the territory of mobility as a service. Um, would require an awful lot of inter expensive integration uh, and really quite challenging. So what we are trying to achieve here um, is something that 
enables a journey planner to know that there is some form of public transport provision in this area and this is how you find out about it and book it rather than it being a definitive you know it's booked and thing like that because that's a step too far uh, certainly for um this point in time um so it's more of a there is something here this is the information that's contained in the booking information we've talked about to enable you to to find out more um, can the activities pick up driver request and set down driver request uh, be used together? It can both be used in the same stop or is it an either or? Roger, that's a very good point. Uh, they are mutually exclusive at the moment. No, that's not the right. one that's the right one so yeah they are they are so um thank you we need to add a another one into that one to uh, allow you to um do pick up and set down driver request thank you roger um for those from dr j for those who are interested the naptan team will be doing meetings on flx and so flexible stops and hail and ride stops in August, and they've put the sign up details. Um, and Michael, will the DFT BODS Trans Exchange creation software be updated to support flexible services? Um, so um, at the moment, the creation software is a uh, complex glorified spreadsheet that won't be um there are conversations going on between the department and a um software provider to provide something more um more user friendly and featured um and um there is probably the opportunity to add flexible into this um for a lot of flexible services uh, um, once you've got the bus stop data in naptan uh, then um actually for somebody with a little bit of technical knowledge it's not too difficult to edit a sample trans exchange file which will be uh, available once we've uh, confirmed the structures and things like that you know so if you've got a single zone for example you know you just need to change the stop and then update the phone number for booking and that sort of thing so it's not beyond the wit of somebody with um, a bit of knowledge to be able to create these files manually because we been really careful to try and make sure that this is simple as possible um i recognize that's not going to be possible for everybody though um okay has anybody else um got any questions um, in terms of mandation of this there is no legislative mandate for providing flexible service data so there is no legal requirement to provide it um we're doing this because we know that you know there's an increasing gap in uh, the data provision as more services become flexible and we're wanting to cover it off before it becomes a uh a even bigger problem than it is at the moment um and so um th there are no hard and fast deadlines we know that some uh operators of flexible services are keener than others to to provide the data um and uh, uh we will be happy to work with uh, authorities to uh to to help operators as much as we can get data available Uh, any other questions from anybody? 
Um, please do feel free if there's anything you don't want to ask in this public forum to uh, send me an email uh, and I will um, get back to you as soon as I can. So if there is nothing more from anybody, um, I thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, as I said at the start, um, there'll be a recording of this sent round uh, in the next uh, day or so. Uh, and um, thank you for your time again and uh, have a good rest of the day. Thank you.